And are, are we're we back <laughs> okay. with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, Bunny! Act three! Act three! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to cabbage patch our way into the third act of the show. And it is said third act where we finally get around to discussing our one and only movie of the week. And this week, we continue our summer of bad movies with an atrocious stinker of a film from director Yui Bowl, a hideous film based on an 80s video game called El Topo. <laughs> I am pretty sure that I'm the only person in the history of podcasts to ever say, Yui Bowles El Topo. Once again, the Pope on Film podcast making history. Yes. So, uh... I'm just kidding, of course. This is a Joe Dorowski film. I am not a fan of westerns, usually, because... Yes. As a brown man, I exist in westerns only as a bad guy to be shot at. So I usually steer clear of the world of westerns. As far as I'm concerned, there is only one good western in the history of mankind, and it's called The Terror of Tiny Town! Yes. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only good western. Oh, also, uh... Uh, when I was little, my dad but, and I used to watch... But Joe Dorosky does definitely turn that theme around yes, as these are consistently All. the people who need to be protected. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, there was another Western I used to watch all the time. What was it called? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Back to the Future 3. But that that's not it. Uh... <laughs> uh Arnold Schwarzenegger is the hero, and Kirk Douglas? Kirk Douglas is the villain? And he's dressed all in black, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's dressed all in white, and the entire thing is basically a live-action uh, uh, Roadrunner Wile E. Coyote cartoon. Yeah? And I think it's called The Villain, if I'm not mistaken. And my dad loved it. It was one of his favorite films, and he would make me watch it with him all the time. And I loved it as a kid because it was so fucking stupid slapstick Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. And it was Arnold Schwarzenegger before he was, like, a big, huge star. So he barely talks in it. It's mostly just the wearing black, twirling his mustache villain. And, like, kidnapping the woman and tying her to the railroad tracks. Uh, the, the woman might have been Anne Margaret, now that I think about it. But that was technically a Western. But it was more like a Western parody. Like, I don't want to call Blazing Saddles a Western. Yeah. So I don't think that this movie was a Western. But I don't know Westerns too well. But uh, that's where we're going. For, for for a couple of weeks. Uh, so, every, every and, and summer... Neither, and neither am I. I mean, like, these are probably, like, the... F basically, the four westerns I like. Although, yeah. that's not exactly true. I mean, Tombstone is a good movie. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there are a handful of others, but, like, I, I think that... The ones that are my finds in the genre, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're getting here. And I, I... I figured we would start at the top. Yeah. And then we're going to gradually come down. Okay, so there are, there are three times throughout the year where well four times there, there are four times throughout the year where we go for a theme in March it's my birthday month and I try and uh, just show movies that I really really like and then during the summer we do an entire theme summer and, and we watch 
uh, uh, movies in a specific theme. We took deep dives into the IMDb bottom 100. Yeah. This past summer, the summer before that, uh, Fred Willard had just died, which was wonderful for our podcast because we just watched Fred Willard films and it was the best. And then during Christmas, we try and watch whatever weird Christmas movies we can find. And then at, at the end, we watch the same Christmas movie that we always watch. And then for October and the weeks around October, Bunny takes over and in October is Bunny's birth month. So we watch whatever he wants. And this month we are focusing on Westerns. Bunny. Uh, well, uh, well, 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 also the thing is, is that during my month, one of the things I want to do or try to do during our, during my month, is go places where we would not normally go yeah. and take a bit of a different direction with some kind of a theme like this. And in particular Westerns, because I think, it, like I said, I think it's probably both of our least favorite genres to the yes, point where absolutely. Westerns, like, never even come up in conversation. You know? Did you see... Did you see this week? Speaking of our, uh, you know, our themed, our themed um, months and the times that we have a specific theme, fucking uh, Melvin Van Peebles just died. I know. And I was shocked because I didn't realize he was still alive, but I was shocked. And, and Natasha's like, what? Who's Melvin Van Peebles? And I'm like, Melvin Van Peebles? He directed Watermelon Man and Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a whole summer, and that was wonderful. That was a whole October. And yes. It was, it was fucking awesome. So, uh, so yeah, uh, this, this is a... If you say we're going to be looking at Westerns, I immediately roll my eyes so back. They just roll so far back into me that I, I can suddenly see my kidneys. But this is a good, a very good choice, a good, intriguing way to start with Westerns. Because, yeah, I yeah. fucking hate because Westerns. I always, I always felt it was an old, a, a white man thing that I just didn't understand. But this is the way Joe to get Dabrowski me. And Jodorowsky is kind of the Alan Moore of film. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where yeah, they I are both that. basically wizards, occultists, whatever exactly you would want to call them. Uh, I think. I think Alan Moore prefers wizard. I don't know about Jodorowsky, maybe magician. Yeah. Which then makes their work more of a facade for something that they are trying to say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And okay. So, like, it, like, this is a mystic journey that has a western kind of painted over it. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I'm so happy that we did the Holy Mountain uh, three years ago. I looked it up because that prepared me for this. And I'm like, I don't know what El Topo is. I've never seen this before. But I have seen Joe Dorowski's Holy Mountain. I am prepared for a Joe Dorowski western. You yes. know? And, and and like, yeah, there's midgets having sex. Now and me, now me personally, I prefer Holy Mountain. Oh yes, absolutely. To El Topo, but I also think that it is probably that kind of human effect as to whatever comes first. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like. Like, uh, everyone says that SNL isn't funny anymore. And when you ask them when was the last time SNL was funny, it was when you were 14 or 16 or 18 years old. Yeah. Whatever SNL you grew up with is 
the funniest SNL. Right, or whatever movie you watched that you fell in love with, the remake is never going to do it. The remake is never going to live up to that movie. I am still so surprised at how many people seriously love and enjoy the original Space Jam. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I... Don't you dare make fun of Space Jam. That's a great movie. It's like, yeah, when you were eight. Yeah. Fucking. Look at Back to the Future now. There's a shit ton of incest. Yeah. It's just creepy. For me, just for me personally, and I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show before, but I am really trying to disconnect the word like from the idea of something being good. Yeah. And dislike yeah. for something being bad. Because that's not necessarily the case. There are James... good things that I like, but they don't become good because I like them. James Wan's latest horror movie, Malignant, I liked that. I really liked that. But I am in no way saying that it's any fucking good. It is yes. a piece of shit that I really liked. Yeah. Uh-huh. Totally get that. Totally get that. Funny. So here's an easy thing for you to do. Explain to us the plot of this week's film. Okay. Well, Joe Dorowski, on a certain level, is a find-your-own-adventure kind of filmmaker. Okay, so I can give you the movie and the plot that I saw, but there's not much reason to believe that it's the movie that you saw, which is really what I like about Joe Dorowski's work. But this was, once again, a mystical journey that the gunslinger was going on. IMDb and Wikipedia told me that uh, uh, the gunslinger then goes off in search of four other gunslingers to kill to earn Maria's affection. And each gunslinger is representative of a different religion. And I had a hard time with that because it's like, okay, the first one's fucking Mexican Jesus. I can see that clear as fucking day. Who the fuck are these other motherfuckers? Yeah. I had the fucking, like, way to not explain that to me, Wikipedia, because I don't know who the fuck these other guys are. One of them's fucking a Russian Cossack fucking gypsy pikey person. The other one is fucking rabbits. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, but, but those are things that, like, I accept from a Jodorowsky movie, just kind of yeah. walking in, that there's going to be a lot of shit that maybe I never get. There was a lot of animal symbolism going on here that I really don't know what that was about, but for well, the overall plot, he was on a spiritual journey, and has many failings. Yeah. And well, reaches an enlightenment point. Yeah. And becomes a savior to a people. Well, speaking that's as rough, that's the rough plot of this movie from my perspective. Yeah. But you could drive a truck through my fucking perspective. Yes. Well, speaking as someone who did go to a strict Catholic school for eight years with nuns and priests and uh, uh, bishops and monsignors. I can say that there are things in El Topo that are symbolic, but then there are just things that aren't, you know, symbolic. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. And let me tell you, you have not lived until you've stripped a priest down and rode him around your village like a horse. Yes. That's just a fun afternoon. Yes. I used to do that all the time. You haven't lived until you've seen a priest and be like, I'm going to rub my blood on your lips. That's just something you do. Yes. To a priest. 
you know? Also, um, man, I remember in 1994, when I had just turned seven, and my dad made me bury my first toy in the desert. Yes. That's, uh, that, that is something that, you know, when you grow up in the desert, like I While did, I was oh, trying to take a crap in this hole. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it, it, there are some things in this movie that creep me out, but yeah, somewhere, somewhere in the deserts of Arizona, there's a talking owl doll, is what I'm saying. Yeah. My, my childhood. I'm just kidding. Because what I just said would imply that my dad took me somewhere and did something with me. Yes. So, JK, <coughs> dad hates me. Um, El Topo. What can we say about this movie that hasn't already been said by a douchebag from Portland? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Fucking. There are some things in this movie that 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 creep me out. Like number one, when I see a western, I usually don't want the first thing I see to be a young boy's penis. Call me crazy. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit of a shocker. Uh, and also... But it was, still, fun... it was still made in the time period where that was acceptable. And then there's the fact that I, I looked at the credits. The <laughs> naked boy, uh, the, the director, Joe Dorowski, Joe Dorowski, yeah. he stars in the film... And the naked boy is his own son. Yes. And there are... I can't think of any other directors that could get away with... I need to make a western, but first, my son must be nude in it. Like, who the fuck gets away with that? I... I... Okay, okay. Like, like okay, Kevin Spacey, dial it back a bit. I, I, I... Yes, I understand there is a certain amount of creep factor to it. Uh, but I still have to give that award to Dario Argento. Yes. Who cast his daughter and then directed her through actual sex scenes in his movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Like, like, uh, how do you, yeah. honey, you're not doing that right. Yeah, Sweetheart, speaking of the... Daddy needs to see you really get down on that cock. Like, like... Ugh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so... And, yeah. And speaking of the creep factor, I'd like to yeah, talk a little all, bit about... All, all Jodorowsky here did is cast his son, because that's certainly preferable than casting somebody else's son for this part. Yeah. And all yeah. he was was a naked boy in a to time begin. and space where that was fairly acceptable. Yeah. For a child of his age. I watched the movie, and then I was confused about the movie, so I watched it a second time, but this time I pulled up... Am I huh? just reading that? No. No, you're not. What do you think, babe? Um, just the, yeah. just the nudity of the child... Yeah, like, that would be yeah, a difficult scary. part to cast. If it was more <laughs> appropriate in the oh, 70s yeah, his... when it was made. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I watched the movie, and then I was confused about the movie, so I watched it a second time, and the second time I pulled up the Wikipedia plot synopsis. Yeah. But that is weird, because the first 35 minutes are explained with two sentences. Yeah. And the last five minutes of the movie are uh, described with two paragraphs. <laughs> so that was difficult. And it's like, shit, there's two paragraphs left in the plot? There's fucking six minutes left. Yeah. What the fuck is going to happen in the last six minutes? So um, speaking of the creep factor, uh, when this movie came out in the year 1970, Joe Dorowski repeatedly said in interviews, that during the rape scene, that wasn't acting, and he actually raped the actress in real life. According to the director, 
who repeatedly said this, he actually hit her and raped her, and that scene is 100% real and unsimulated. Then, in okay. 2019, in, then in 2019, because Joe Dorowski, which is too long, so I'm just going to call him Jodo for the rest of the film, your boy Jodo, um, apparently Jodo is very much still alive. And in 2019, he said, yes, I was just being surreal then. That was just words, but they were just that, words. They had no truth. I don't know why people took my words as truth. I was just trying to expand people's consciousness. And what the fuck kind of apology is that? This is, this is from Jodorowsky? Yes. Yes. Really? He is now trying to, like, walk back his repeated comments about the rape scene being real and saying that it was simulated and it was just acting, but him being Jodorowsky, he's like, oh, I was just being surreal with language and that was just words, but the words were in truth, and I wish that people didn't take my words literally because they are just surreal, and it's like, dude, you can just say I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, Joe Doe? Number one. <coughs> and number two, you think Trump could do that? A you what? think Trump what? could be like, you think Trump could be like, yes, I, I said that, I, that the election was stolen, but I was just trying to be surreal, okay? It's just words. Yes. It's just words, not truth. And what is a word? Oh, so, no, Trump has certainly got away with similar. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yeah. But, yeah, no, El Topo feels like... Uh, so so what is... Have we heard from the actress? I mean... I don't know. I don't he? know. I haven't, I haven't found... I've found very little information about her. I mean, because he is still a goofy artist, and he's going to say stupid shit. Okay, uh, you said goofy artist. Um, I would like to go onto a fun little detour. I assume that Jodo was dead, but I'm he's very saying, much alive. Saying, no, 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 no. Goofy artist, definitely. I'm not saying what he, what he, what he said was good or right or anything like that. Yeah, but, but you would um, not be terribly surprised <clears throat> if you found out. Salvador Dali said something similar. Yeah. You yeah. know. That makes sense. That makes sense. Right. But somebody, I, uh, somebody I would... who was trying to be out on the edge. edge. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd like to take a little detour, if I can, because okay. I assume that Joe Dorowski was dead, but Jodo's very much alive. He has a YouTube channel. Yeah. He hasn't posted anything in two years on the YouTube channel, but he has posted a lot of things. He does a lot of tarot card readings. He answers questions. He has posted such great videos as the following, and these are the titles of actual videos that okay. Jodo has done on his YouTube channel. How do I shapeshift? Okay. Why am I still alive? And my favorite... How to not feel like an extraterrestrial most of the time with friends and family. Yeah. That last one, I relate to like a motherfucker. <laughs> I'd like to think that of all the podcasts, of all the videos, of all of the people out there talking about Joe Dorowski and his importance and uh, El Topo and and the yeah. holy mountain and how uh, the symbolism and deconstructing it and talking about its importance that out of all of those people we're the ones cussing the most <laughs> like to think that people aren't 100% ready for like a Mexican with blue hair going Joe Dorowski yeah that fucking guy that fucking guy his movies are fucking weird as shit Fucking motherfucker. They are. Motherfucker weird. doing art. They are weird as shit. And that's that's really what I love about them. As far yeah. as, as, as watching his YouTube channel, like, okay, no, 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 no. I'm a fan 
I'm not a follower. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Like but like I have I have this weird relationship where I respond very well to things that have an occult theme, as Joe yeah. Dorowski's work does. But I'm still an atheist. I still think it's horseshit. You know? Yeah. But I find yeah. the metaphors and things like that very interesting. Yeah. Well, I was watching Joe Dorowski's YouTube channel and, and just blown away at the fact that he's still alive. And that got me thinking is that if if Joe Doe, Joe Dor, like a like a Game of Thrones character, if Joe Dor yeah. is still alive, that means he's still available to direct some movies. Yeah. And I thought Hollywood should come a knocking on Joe Dor's door. Well, and but they maybe, wouldn't let him do Dune. No, but this is this is my pitch. You get Joe Dorowski and just give him the reins of some major movie franchises. Yeah. And just see what he does. Just give him some major Hollywood movie franchises and find out what the fuck he does with them. Come on, Hollywood, grow some balls. Don't be wussies and give Joe Dor the key. So I have three ideas. Yeah. And while I'm telling you these ideas, feel free to uh, come up with some own with 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 some of your own, I combine that in, into some own. It, it, feel free to think of some of your own if you want to. But okay. here's the first one. Here's the first one. Joe Dorowski's 007. And so, you know, uh, Bond shows up, not in an Aston Martin on a horse, and he's going to the 007, the His Majesty's Secret Service headquarters, and of yeah. course it's in a pyramid. Of course it's in a pyramid. And, right. uh, and Q is there, but Q is naked, and Q says, Bond, we need you to kill. And Bond says, I can kill, Okay, wait, wait, but wait, wait, can wait, wait, I wait, wait. live? Does, does Q have a bit in his mouth while he's trying to explain this. Yes. Yes. So that they are having this dialogue to the point where they are only able to communicate through uh, telepathy and symbolism. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There's a... Because you can't a understand a fucking word he's saying with a bit in his mouth. Yeah, there's porcupines everywhere. What does that mean? Yes. You'll have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's porcupines and candles everywhere. I like the porcupines. And, yeah, and... The porcupines uh, are a nice touch. And Q says, Bond, we need you to kill. And Bond says, well, I can kill, but can I live? Can anyone live? And what is death but an extension of life? And what is life but a long prequel to death. And yeah. Q just says, let's make love, and then they fuck, and that's the end of the movie. Boom! Jodorowsky's 007. <laughs> so here's another one. This one I'm really proud of, okay? okay? Here's my second one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Jodorowsky's. Oh, so, okay. The, the beginning is totally normal, and it's the regular... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they're riding skateboards through the sewer. And radical, bodacious, gnarly, bro. Let's go eat some pizza. What? Shredder's going to attack? We're going to go, Master Splinter. So they go and they fight Shredder, and it's a totally normal uh, uh, battle, a totally normal Ninja Turtle battle. Bros, we can't fight Shredder by ourselves. We need to fight them together using turtle power. And so they're fighting uh, Shredder. And then suddenly, Leonardo just says, I grow tired of, of your morality. And he gets the knife and he just stabs it through Shredder's heart. Gory. There's fucking blood everywhere. And his guts and his innards start pouring out of his body. And Splinter lays on the floor, covered in blood, and he's dead. 
And, uh, oh shit, my phone's about to die. Hold on. I've been using my phone this whole damn time. Where's my plug? Okay, so, uh, split, so Shredder is dead. And the Ninja Turtles go, and they go up to uh, Shredder's body. They take off Shredder's mask, and it's their face under Shredder's mask. Yes. And then a slow pan back to the Ninja Turtles. Now they're all Shredder. And now everyone is Shredder, but no one is Shredder. So then they go and see Splinter. Splinter will have answers. Splinter's on top of a mountain, and he's naked, and he's playing the flute. And so yes. they climb up, but once they climb up, they, they finally see Splinter, and they're like, Master, you need to help us. And, and Splinter says, the only way I can help you is for you to kill me. And then yes. they all kill themselves, and then the blood forms a heart. End of the movie. And, and wait, wait, wait. And then they all fuck a bull. And then they all fuck a bull. Yes. Yeah. This Teenage Mutant Ninja Jodorowsky's, that's a number one movie. Number one movie. And so I have one more Jodorowsky film, and this one is a legitimately good idea, which is weird. But, uh, of course, Barb and Star go to the Holy Mountain. <laughs> Barb and Star go to the Holy Mountain. I it, am so on board. It's 100% the same movie, The Holy Mountain, but we Rosencrantz and Guildenstern it with Barb and Star. And they're on vacation, but they've gone to the wrong place, and they don't know where they are, and just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What, Barb? Look over there, Star, that guy. Doesn't he look familiar? He does. Who does he look like? Does he look like, oh, you know who he looks like? He looks like Jesus Christ. <laughs> he looks like Jesus Christ? Oh my gosh, yes, he looks exactly like Jesus Christ. Maybe we should, maybe we should get, get a picture with him, maybe get an autograph. Look, he's going into that tall tower. We should follow him. Oh, you I know, can't believe that we're going to meet Jesus. You I should have worn my good bar, blocks. Bar, back in Jerusalem, they didn't bathe very much. Oh my goodness. Does yeah. Jesus stink? Do you think? Because they didn't have plumbing back then. I don't even I, I think they had toilet paper to wipe their bottom. Oh my goodness. And you know how those woolen robes, natural wool, how, how that just absorbs the odor. But even if the Savior is stinky, I'm just really excited to meet him. I haven't been this excited since I saw John Chiedel at that airport bar. Yeah. I can see this entire film, and somehow it's great. <laughs> well, I, I, for that one, I'm leaning more on the satire, because really, if anybody's work needs to be satirized... Okay, I usually do not like movies that are very up their own ass, but nothing is more up its own ass than Jodorowsky, and it's it's like my one exception, you know. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm worried nothing about nothing is better to parody than something that's completely up its own ass. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what I'm worried about and is for that some uh, reason, like it's even funnier if you like it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Barb and Star go to the Holy Mountain, I think, would be absolutely fucking hysterical. It'd be and great. And would be the galaxy quest of Jodorowsky movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'd be fucking wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I'm worried about now is that when, when this blue slash teal in my hair finally disappears, and yeah. I have all... I have uh, my long black hair back. I'm worried I'm going to look like Mexican Jesus in the desert. Yeah. Really worried about that. Because I saw the Mexican Jesus in the sandals in the desert. And it's like, shit, is that going to be me when my black hair comes back? I'm a bit worried about that. But then, but then this is also where he is leveling up. Yeah. In his steps to enlightenment by killing each of each of 
his predecessors and basically claim his ability. So like the first one would allow bullets to pass through them. He used that shit a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. I guess he learned to be more precise. And he learned... He learned how to kill people with a butterfly net. Rabbits are tasty. Yeah. He learned that a butterfly net is more powerful than a gun. He yes. learned that sometimes you just gotta lick a shoe. Sometimes you yes. just gotta lick a woman's shoe. That's an important... That's, that's symbolism. Everything is symbolism and nothing is symbolism. And then he became Graham Chapman. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good call. That's yeah. a good call. He became Graham Chapman. Yeah. And we are now into a completely different movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Did you know that there's a sequel? A sequel to El Topo? Yes. For the longest time, Joe Dorowski's like, I've come up with an idea for a sequel, and I'm going to make it. I'm totally going to make it. Uh, I've written it, and we're going to do it. And yeah. so it, for years and years and years, he, he was talking about the, his uh, sequel to El Topo, he even released like a te like a teaser poster, but he never released it. He just couldn't get the backing. Nobody wanted to do a sequel to El Topo, whatever the fuck. So finally, he just said in like 2008, at the end of 2008, fuck it. So he released he released it as a graphic novel. He wrote the script and then had someone turn it into a comic book, and you can get it on freaking Amazon. That's probably and the Barnes poster I lifted. Yeah, it's called The Sons of El Topo, and it follows the, the son, and now he's the gunslinger. And Jodorowsky wrote it. Jodorowsky wrote a fucking comic book. I like to get the more popular artwork for the movie's poster for the announcements and the pre-roll. Yeah. You know, something that they are comfortable and they're used to seeing. You know? Yeah. Then yeah, for our section, for when we're actually covering it, I like to find something a little different. Maybe a foreign version or something like that. I, 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 I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know? Yeah. Uh, going for something different. Yeah. I appreciate your hard work, good sir. Thank you. Uh, but but again, and finally, Jim Dabrowski is he, he's one of those. He's basically an acid trip. Yeah. You do not want a steady diet of Joe Dabrowski. No. You know, so like, when the fuck did we do Holy Mountain? It's been a good three years. Three years. I looked it up. It was three years. Yep. So after having fallen in love with, with Holy Mountain and Jodorowsky as a filmmaker, it took me three years to get around to another one of his movies. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. clear. So basically, expect October three years from now. Is that 2024? Yeah. If we're not living under domes or something like that. Um, expect it to be a, a month of circus movies. So I can nice. sneak in Santa Santa Grey. <laughs> uh, I feel that there's a lot of movies, especially in like the 50s and 60s, of like, hey, it's a traveling circus. Everything's fine. Until murder. I yeah. feel like if you really tried, you could find like five movies that are that exact same plot. You know? Yeah. And probably Joan Collins is in one of them. <laughs> Trog! So, uh, one last thing I wanted to mention. 
Uh, I just posted something really great in the in the group that I'm really proud of because I was trying to put my finger on who Joe Dorowski looked like, and then I realized that he looked like Derek from The Good Place. Okay. So I found a, a, a still from The Good Place that looks 100% like it could be a scene from El Topo. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm really proud of it. I tweeted it and nobody gave a shit because I'm tweeting about fucking El Topo. Oh. But I'm, I'm really proud of it. But finally, the last thing I wanted to mention, um, one thing I love is when there's a movie and it's beloved, everyone loves it. Oh my goodness, the thing. Kirk Russell, the fucking Antarctica and monsters and hey, we're just gonna, it's, either one of us could be it and we're just gonna drink and die and fucking the thing. No one trusts each other. We're all tired. Everyone loves that, and it's a classic. But you can always go to one person. Savage New York Times bitch Vincent Canby. Oh, Who's yeah, all right. Hit me. To fucking shit on classic movies. Whatever classic movie is out there, just look for a Vincent Canby review, and it's going to be a wonderful bitch fest. So... I found his review, and the headline is, Is El Topo a con? A con? A con, yeah. Uh, so, it, it's a long article. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I want to read my favorite part. Okay. It isn't that El Topo is not about anything but rather that it's about too much. Inventorying it is like sorting out the contents of a turkey buzzard stomach. There is very little that's not in there, but nothing much has been digested. Okay. I love that so much, and he goes on to just keep attacking... Uh, God, Original Sin, Catholicism, Zen, Lao Tzu, Christ, the conventions of movie westerns, Ulysses and the Oddity, uh, aphorisms, my butterfly net is stronger than your gun. They're all here in a movie that is all guts, but has no body to give the guts particular shape or function. The movie has no life of its own. <laughs> Joe Dorowski is not interesting or inventive enough as a filmmaker to structure reality. To restructure well, reality. Yeah, but see, well, first off, again, with a work like Chodorowsky's, anybody's opinion is valid. So I totally validate what he is saying about the movie. You know? Yeah. This movie but is so But what he is complaining about is one of the things I find very interesting and really like about the work. Yeah, no, there's no connective tissue between anything. But it still, yeah. it still follows a narrative, but you fill in those little spots. Like, why did he go to the town with the naked little boy? Yeah. Did, did he go there for a reason, or did he just happen upon it? Yeah. You know? The, the thing about a movie like this is that it's so non-traditional and it's so experimental and it's so artistic and it's so full of uh, meaning and symbolism that like you said every review is correct yes so if you come come at this and say that uh <coughs> like i saw some people online say that the bandit who destroyed the town in the beginning is God, and the gunslinger represents man. And in the beginning of the film, before Genesis, man kills God and then sets out to become the savior of mankind. And the rest of it is all a Bible analogy. And you go, yes, you are absolutely correct. And then you go to somebody else and say, oh, this is pretentious shit. And it's like, you are also correct. Well, yeah, yes, yes, and it, and because of that, it makes it very much fun to talk about, 
at least yeah, to me anyway. Bring, because yeah, yes, you there were thing. there were very many Jesus analogies, at least as close as Jodorowsky has gotten to Jesus previously, with yeah. the gunslinger character. But yeah. but it, it, it's his own personal Jesus still. Yeah. Your own personal Jodorowsky. I I I like I want you bring you bring so much of yourself to this film that yeah. when you see the film you get your own response to it. And my response to seeing this amazing work of art is I'm gonna try and dumb it down as much as fucking possible. I'm gonna what? I'm gonna try and dumb this discussion down as much <laughs> as possible. Because this is a, a very artistic hoity toity movie. So what I need to do is come in and say, you know what this movie needs? Fucking Vin Diesel in a in a in a in a car. In a yeah. muscle car. Just <laughs> get in, Jesus. We've got to stop these terrorists. And they just <laughs> Tokyo drift into the desert. <laughs> Fucking yeah. Let's get a. Let's get a. Uh, what's his name? The the Michael. I forgot his name, and I'm so happy that I forgot his name. Michael. He did all the goddamn Transformers. Michael Bay's El Topo. Yes. You know, and just all these explosions and just... Yeah. Yeah, it's just all the gunshot, at the gunfight at the end. It's yeah. just all of the, the last five-minute massacre, but just done with an insane amount of CGI robots. Yes. Yeah. Now that's a movie I can watch. Ernest goes to El Tobo. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, so that's all I've got for El Topo. It's a good movie, but if I had to watch a uh, weird, insane, bizarre art film, I'll probably go to the Holy Mountain first. But I am really excited for the yeah. old dog version of Holy yeah. Mountain. Yeah. So, but this I'll is a good totally movie. I agree with that. It's not, it's not... I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Holy Mountain. Yeah. But it's still a good movie. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think and, El and Topo you, is a, a little bit more, a, a little too abstract. Yeah. To enjoy as much as, as Holy Mountain, which was a bit more in your face with its metaphors. Yeah. Cause, cause, yeah, because cause this movie is just, there's rabbits, there's a person in a field, there's blood, there's uh, kissing. But then in the Holy Mountain, literally it ends with, you just watched a film. It is ending. Yeah. What do you think, audience? Yeah. This yeah. is me, the director, talking to you. This was a movie. What <laughs> have we learned, Charlie Brown? So, so yeah, it's a bit more, it's a bit more direct, uh, Holy Mountain. But, yeah, yes. this was fun. Bunny! Yes. I'm dying to know what freaking movie are we watching next week? Okay. So now again, now we're taking a step down. Okay. 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 We're taking a step down. This is clearly a western following western themes. Back to the Future 3? Starring Terrence Hill, an actor who do, does not get enough credit in America, but was huge in fucking Europe at the time. Although, you know a lot of his work anyway, I am sure. Oh, of course. And Henry uh, Fonda, My Name is Nobody. My name is nobody is this a is this a prequel to uh uh bob odenkirk's nobody is there gonna be a fight in a bus i believe so 
awesome. Then I am down I with that. I believe this is it. what... Okay, so... Okay, we can't get directly to nobody with Bob Odenkirk, okay? Because we have to stop over by the Kingsman. Okay? Nice! And okay. if you remember, there was the American version of the Kingsman who were all yeah. basically Texan. Yeah. Okay? So this starts with Terrence Hill in My Name is Nobody, which starts that Texan order. Okay. Okay. Is which there then be... becomes which then becomes uh, the order that Bob Odenkirk became a part of. Okay. Is is there gonna be any ro Are there gonna be any robots that are specifically created to not kill Elton John? Uh not in this one. Okay. Okay. I'll still keep an open mind though. Not in this movie. But Terrence Hill, man, he just doesn't get enough... He did this, and this was a big movie. This, I mean, it was a spaghetti western, but it was still fucking starring Henry Fonda, and Henry Fonda was still big in the day. And Terrence Hill did this, and Terrence Hill did the uh, Trinity Trilogy, which is also westerns, and I'm really not big of a fan, but these were big movies. Uh, Bernard, Doug, stop it, Doug. You're going to wake up Eleanor. Along Chill. with Super Fuzz or Super Cop? I know that movie, yes. See, I knew, yeah. I knew we would get to one of them. Super Fuzz, yeah. Yeah, it's like an Italian movie set in New York and cops get superpowers. And it's like yeah. this weird grindhouse movie where they're all Superman, but they're cops, yeah. Yeah. And, and a few other movies like that as well. Terrence Hill was huge overseas. All throughout Europe, he was he was the fucking superstar at the time. And we kind of give him a, a passing glance here. Yeah. But, yeah. So that is what we're going to be doing. My name is Nobody, Terrence Hill, Henry Fonda... A real, a, 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 a more Western than El Topo, but you can you can draw a line. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. That's going to be exciting. Next week, we're watching another Western. My name is Nobody. Uh, plus, uh, I'm going to be singing a lot of Neil Diamond songs. Just, you know, a lot of Neil Diamond. So yeah. that'll be exciting next week. But looking back at this week, wow. Uh, Joe Dorowski's 007, Barb and Star, Tony Morrison, Tommy Dreamer's a douchebag, Dear Evan <laughs> Hansen, what's it like in New York City? I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. A fairly decent, a somewhat entertaining episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good entertainer. This has been a damn good episode. Good. And a damn I, good I, conversation about a damn good movie. Yeah, good. I was gonna, I was gonna uh, say that same thing, but I feel that you're the one who is the decider, who <laughs> decides whether or not the episode gets that distinction. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Stephen on behalf of Natasha and Amber and Mal and Eleanor and Maxwell and, and Emerald. I gotta say, I just wanna say thanks for listening and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you just waffle the cookie cut. And you lay the original wavy chips. Good, delicious. Yes, Eleanor. And you thinking? That's fine. Take your time. Take your time. And you. You're well, not gonna say anything. Okay. Sleepy babies. I don't know. And you, I don't knows. Okay. I don't know.
it, <laughs> okay, because we got to wrap it up, Eleanor. Have anything? Have anything really quickly. Come on. Come and on. you just look at the first thing you see. No, I don't. Okay. Okay, you don't want to do it. Great. Do 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 do, etc. Cut and print. Cut That's a wrap. and print. <laughs>